of Going All In, Get the Edge You Need 216. I'm Dr. Erin McKinley, and today we have another awesome spotlight session with Roxanne Kingston and Molly Edwards from the University of Southern Mississippi Dietetic Internship based in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Welcome. All right, before we get started, I'm just going to have Molly and Roxanne just tell us a little bit about yourselves, how you became an RD, your journey to that, and how you landed at Southern Miss. Well, I can go first. Um, my name is Molly Edwards, and I did my undergrad at the University of Tennessee, and I started out completely undecided, took my first Nutrition 100 class, and just fell in love with it. Um, I think nutrition is the perfect balance between that science, health-based field, but not having the blood and guts and hospital, um, the, the more intense stuff. So um, I found my balance in nutrition. Um, and so I got into my internship at Southern Mississippi, actually, um, did my master's there as well. And I loved it so much that I came back. So I've been working as the course mentor for almost four years now. So I'm involved in all of the nutrition master's courses, um, as well as the DI. And then as of this spring, I'll be taking over the dietetic internship director position from Ms. Kingston. Hey guys, like Molly said, um, I'm Roxanne Kingston. I'm the current director of the dietetic internship. Um, I have been a registered dietitian for 15 years. Uh, my mom was a child nutrition director. So growing up, I did uh, science fair projects on why it's important to eat a healthy breakfast. So that was kind of what started my love for nutrition. I always knew I wanted to go into nutrition. I really never wavered. Um, I did my dietetic internship at USM. Um, I consulted as a long-term care dietitian for about four years and have been at the university 11 years. So this is my sixth year as the director and um, I have been working with the dietetic internship for 10 years. I was in the assistant director position uh, prior to uh, my current role. And um, I will be handing over the dietetic internship to Molly Edwards in the spring. So we're really excited about um, our incoming class. All right, Molly, you can go into the presentation about your program. All right, great. Well, thank you all again for being here. Um, we're really excited to have you all attend our presentation on the dietetic internship and master's degree program at the University of Southern Mississippi. So today I'd like to give you a summary of our program at Southern Miss, a glimpse of what your courses and your rotations will look like, and then we'll have some opportunity for some questions towards the end. So I'd first like to provide you with a bit of background about the University of Southern Mississippi. The university is known informally as Southern Miss, and it's a public research university located in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. We are about 70 miles north of the Gulf Coast of Mississippi and 105 miles northeast of New Orleans. And Southern Miss is an accredited university that awards baccalaureate, master's, specialist, and doctoral degrees. And the picture you see here is of the administration building, which was built in 1930. This is one of the oldest buildings on campus and is a symbol for USM. So our mascot is the Golden Eagle. The first Golden Eagle mascot was Nugget and he came to Southern Miss in 1980. And although the original Nugget is no longer with us, the Golden Eagles, who are now named Seymour, continue to entertain fans at Golden Eagles athletic events. A few years ago, an alumni donated this bronze Golden Eagle for the front of campus, and the statue is a massive three-ton sculpture of a Golden Eagle. It's 22 feet tall and 20 feet wide, and it sits on an eight-foot-high pedestal. So here is our stadium where the Golden Eagle football team plays. On fall Saturday nights, you're likely to hear the phrase Southern Miss to the top. This cheer is used when the Golden Eagles make a first down, and it's also encouraged as a greeting and to celebrate or recognize Southern Miss accomplishments. You might also see this abbreviated as SMTTT. -T -T. 
So the School of Kinesiology and Nutrition is located in the newly renovated Joseph Green Hall. We now have a new food prep lab and a kitchen with state-of-the-art appliances. And we share this building with the kinesiology department and some other social sciences. So if you are interested in applying for a graduate assistantship for your first year of your master's degree, this is the building where our GAs work assisting in course instruction or research within the nutrition department. So why should you choose Southern Miss for your internship? Within 21 months, you have completed your dietetic internship as well as your graduate degree. And through the classes you will take prior to entering supervised practice, we'll ensure that you have a strong foundational knowledge that you need to function at a higher level once you are in your facilities. We offer an innovative curriculum that aligns, with, aligns the coursework with your internship re, um, requirements. And we have designed the coordination of supervised practice and coursework to help you develop critical thinking and decision-making skills that you will need in the workplace. Additionally, we implement cutting edge online teaching strategies. You'll have a greater interaction with the faculty as well as with your classmates. Each of our courses have live Zoom classes that usually occur about six times a semester in which you're able to interact with your professor, interact with the guest speakers, as well as your peers. Um, your coursework will complement all areas of practice, further increasing your preparation for entry level practice. We offer a focus on upcoming areas of dietetics, including improved communication, leadership, counseling, and global health. And research has been strongly integrated into supervised practice. So some facts that are important to know about the internship. Our first fact, our out-of-state tuition fees are waived for students who are enrolled in a fully online program. So that means that all of our graduate students pay an in-state tuition rate. Federal financial aid is available for students who qualify. And many students choose to continue working or living at home during their first year of studies, making this program much more affordable. So another option to increase affordability is applying for one of our limited graduate assistantships that provide both a living stipend and tuition waiver for your first year of coursework. So a couple of things that we are proud of that you might be interested to know. In the last five years, our master's students have had two manuscripts and 23 abstracts published in peer reviewed journals and have gone on to pre present their research at national meetings. USM's online education program is among the top seven nationally and is number one in the state based on academic quality, student services and graduate success. Due to our online program, we have graduate students enroll each year from all over the country and the world. One of our graduate students this sem semester is actually participating in Zoom classes from Japan. And we also have a wide network of graduate RDs who return for guest speaking lectures and offer networking opportunities for our interns, as well as help with job placement after graduation. So now to get into the specifics of our dietetic internship. Again, we are housed within the School of Kinesiology and Nutrition, and we are a gra graduate level practicum program incorporating supervised practice with graduate coursework. So our interns are placed in one of three locations, either the Hattiesburg area, Jackson, or the Mississippi Gulf Coast during your second year of studies in your rotations. Um, so your rotations will occur either within the city you are placed as well as the surrounding areas. And all interns are required to participate in a minimum of a thousand hours of supervised practice while enrolled in the master's required dietetic internship. So interns are placed in their supervised practice facility for 32 hours per week during the final fall and spring semester of the program. So this means interns attend their facilities Monday to Thursday and have the opportunity to catch up on schoolwork or just rest on Fridays. You'll also often have classes, virtual classes on Fridays that you might attend as well. So the 21 month dietetic internship begins in the fall 
with Kinesiology 680 Research Method Statistics and NFS 664, which is a seminar course, as well as 713, which is our nutrition education course. During the spring, you would take NFS 662, Community Health and Global Nutrition, NFS 810, Food and Nutrition Public Policy, and KIN 681, which is your Research Methods 2 course. Again, these courses are fully online, so most students choose to remain in their home location unless they accept a graduate assistantship. During both of these semesters, you will be doing some experiential learning, about 150 hours, and so that will count towards the thousand total hours required for the internship. And these experiential learning activities include simulations and case studies, as well as mock nutrition education and counseling sessions. And we find that these experiential learning activities help to prepare you for working with real patients in your rotations, as well as alleviate some of the time required in facilities during the second year of the program. Then this third semester, which is summer, starts what we lovingly call boot camp. This is eight hours of an advanced MNT course and an advanced food systems management course. And during the summer semester, you'll learn all the content necessary to begin the bulk of your supervised practice experience. So our interns find these courses as to review and expand on all that you've learned during your DPD program. We also include a variety of clinical and management case studies in these courses that will better prepare you to work with patients and nutrition staff in your rotations in the fall. So then in the fall, you will take 780, which is advanced practice in nutrition and food systems. And this course supplements your internship rotations with graduate coursework so that you're applying what you learn in rotations at a higher level. The same thing goes for your spring course in FS 774, which is management of nutritional services. And then NFS 692 is your special problems course. And so that's essentially your research project that will allow you to finish up your master's degree. Towards the end of spring semester, you will take written comps. And upon meeting these requirements, your degree is conferred that May. So following this, you're eligible to take the RD exam. And at USM, we provide an in-depth RD exam review course, usually two to three days, to better prepare you to pass the exam and become an RDN. So a lot to take in there. I just wanted to show you um, another look at the courses that I just discussed. So these are all the courses you would take during those 21 months. And we aim to provide a variety of courses that focus on upcoming and innovative areas of dietetics. So these courses like Food and Nutrition Public Policy, Nutrition Education, and Global Nutrition and Health help you build both leadership skills and advanced critical thinking in our graduate nutrition students. So this map shows the areas of Mississippi where our internship occurs. And interns are placed, like I said, in either one of three areas. So Jackson, Hattiesburg, or the Mississippi Gulf Coast. During your supervised practice, you will experience a variety of rotations. Everyone starts with orientation, where you learn more about your main facility. And then you will rotate through general clinical, renal, nutrition support, long-term care, WIC, child nutrition programs, general food service management, and a food bank. And towards the end of the semester, you will get to practice as you would independently through staff experience rotations. And then we provide two weeks in a special interest rotation where you get to choose where you want to go and what you want to do. You will gain even more experience through activities such as the Health Promotion and Ed Education Project, Diabetes Camp, which tends to be a highlight for most interns during the summer, um, recruiting, community health activities, journal club, menu planning, as well as professional development and leadership activities.
So next, I just want to show you a few of the facilities that our interns rotate through in each of our locations. So Jackson, obviously, is one of our larger cities in the southern Mississippi region and has the greatest variety of hospitals and clinics. Our Hattiesburg facilities are located, are listed here, and we usually have about two to three interns in the Hattiesburg area. And then last are Gulf Coast facilities. And so the facilities that we work with that have been listed here are often changing as we add new opportunities and are able to expand experiences, but these can give you a glimpse of our current partners. So next, I wanna talk about our application process. So the first step is to apply through our graduate school. Um, there is an application fee associated with this and GRE scores are no longer required for our master's program. Um, we do require official transcripts from all colleges and universities that you've attended, and then three letters of recommendation that must be submitted through the graduate school online application portal. Then we also use the DICUS applications, and so that also has a fee associated. Um, and through DICUS, we do require a personal statement. And then again, all transcripts and three letters of recommendation submitted through the DICUS portal. So for step three, you will submit a preferred placement for supervised practice. And that's where you rank the city placement you would prefer. So Jackson, Hattiesburg, or the Gulf Coast. There is a $50 internship fee and these two must be mailed directly to the nutrition department at the university. And then step four, we participate in computer matching. And so this is through DND. There is again, a computer matching fee. And this deadline is February 15th this year. So definitely something to be aware of. So I wanna discuss some questions that we hear pretty often. Um, there are some scholarships available and the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics Foundation is the largest provider of dietetic scholarships. And their website is listed here. Um, they provide a variety of scholarships to eligible students through their application system here, um, as well as the USM Foundation. So again, our online students do not pay out of state tuition. Um, our online students are eligible for in-state tuition. Um, and there is a link posted here as well, which can give you a bit more information about what that tuition would look like. And then financial aid is available to our students. Um, and a link is provided here as well. So to finish up, I wanted to provide you with some personal testimonies of two of our interns that completed the DI last year. So first is Ms. Meredith Bishak, and for her, this program provided opportunities to meet new people and get, her, get a better idea of what to do once you finish supervised practice. And what helps set you apart from other professionals when applying for jobs is that you finish with your master's degree. And so Meredith said it was important for her to build relationships with other dietitians, learning from them and gaining advice. And her advice to you as incoming interns is to ask questions, be professional, be on time, which does mean early, and be eager to learn each day. Another one of our interns that graduated this past May is Callie Godbold. And Callie felt that this program provided her with networking opportunities and enhanced her dietetic practice skills as well as improving her confidence in communication. Callie also noted that this program taught her how to become a professional, which I would agree that professional development and job training is a big focus in our dietetic internship. Her advice to you is to maintain composure and positivity despite adversity and not to overstress. So while stress is natural in any graduate program or dietetic internship, um, our program staff, faculty, and preceptors are incredibly supportive, and they're with you every step of the way. So 
So finally, I'd like to finish with a few pictures of our internship over the years. So in the top left, you'll see some of the interns enjoying some paddle boarding at diabetes camp. Below that is an internship class exploring the city at Fincy, which I believe was at Philadelphia that year. In the middle is a photo of a visit with the Mississippi Food Network, which is one of the largest food banks in Mississippi that most of our interns spend a week of rotations at. The bottom right was a field trip to Country Girls Creamery back when I was an intern. And then the top right is one of my favorite photos of a group of interns who decided to participate in the Diabetes Camp Talent Show as the group 15 Gs. So they made up and wrapped a song about the importance of 15 grams of carbohydrates. So I've included my contact information here as well as Ms. Kingston's. Um, please don't hesitate to reach out with any questions in the future. I remember applying for internships and I know that it was so overwhelming. So I hope that you'll reach out if you're considering becoming a Southern Miss intern. So thank you all. All right, thank you so much for that, that overview. So I'm gonna go into my five questions that I ask all directors that come on for spotlight sessions. And these questions were put together with the help of my students. Really, I wanted to find out what they really wanted to know from directors and what they're looking for in potential applicants. So the first question is, is there a particular thing that you love to see when reading a personal statement? I might pass this one off to Ms. Kingston because I feel like you've read quite a few personal statements over the years. Sure. Yes, I have. <laughs> um, so what do I like to see in a personal statement? Um, I like somebody to be really honest with me um, and not use too much flowery language where it's too hard to kind of read what they're actually trying to tell me. I like them to be specific about their short and long-term goals. I like to hear a little backstory, something that makes me remember them, like that, that makes them stand out from the crowd. If there's anything that you can weave into a personal statement that helps me to know that you're going to be an ethical intern and that um, you have great character, then that, that really is a plus. We really need interns that we know we can trust. So especially working out in the field when we're not with you all the time. Um, so those would be my top things. All right, so our second question is a true or false question. Uh, true or false, an applicant's resume should be one page and one page only. And either way, why? I would say true. Um, I'll let Miss Kingston follow up on this as well with her opinion, but I think that, um, you know, like Miss Kingston just mentioned with the flowery language, I think that it's important and it's one thing that we stress at Southern Miss is learning how to be comprehensive yet concise. That's kind of our phrasing you'll hear from almost every professor because there are times where you need to get something across, um, but there are there's a concise way to do that. And so I'd like to see in a resume that you can show us how great you are uh, within a page. Yeah, I'd have to agree with that. Um, exactly what Molly said. I mean, we love for you to, to tell us how great you are in a succinct manner so that we don't have to kind of filter through a lot. Um, you know, if that means leaving some things out that are maybe less important and just highlighting those more important things, then um, that's wonderful. All right. So the third question that I have is, and this might be one that could be directed more at Roxanne and her experience with applicants. Is there a particular thing that an applicant may do, and it could be in their application and any other sort of interaction you have with them where you there would be a red flag, so to speak, to where you would think this applicant maybe isn't the best fit for our program. So I kind of hinted to this when I talked about the personal statement, but I, there are definitely can be red flags um, when people try to maybe embellish an experience that they haven't actually had or not just be 100% honest about like a situation when we're asking situational questions. 
Um, you know, when, when interns ask us what the most important thing, thing is, we will always say 100% of the time, you know, you don't have to, we love academic scholars um, that, are, that are really bright and wonderful, but above that, we need somebody that's going to be ethical, that's going to be honest and that we can trust. We need them to be able to do the academic coursework as well. Um, but uh, those things are, are, are really important in our internship. And Molly said earlier when she was talking about um, professionalism, I would say all of that's wrapped up together. And it's, it's something that um, we really value at Southern Miss and just kind of we stay true to that. So I would also say I, I would agree with not making up your situation. We actually... Um, do some practice interviews with our interns before entering practice. And um, that's one thing we say, don't make up a situation because you just can't, it doesn't come across as natural. And sometimes it gets hard to follow with follow-up questions. Um, and then my other thing, I it might just be at Southern, but a lot of times in interviews, you'll hear a question such as, when have you had a challenging interaction or a difficult relationship with um, maybe a coworker, a supervisor, and I would say to to really think through those answers. Um, those can are good to talk about the ways you've overcome this challenge, but can sometimes highlight some um, conflict that maybe could have been avoided or could have been handled better. Um, so maybe practice those a few times or get some feedback on those types of questions as well. All right, perfect. I like those answers. All right, so my fourth question, what is one area of the program that you're actively working on trying to make even better for your interns? I would say complete preparation for your rotations. We don't want you walking in on day one and feeling scared and like you don't know what you're doing. You know, our summer courses really prepare you to feel knowledgeable about what you're walking into. Um, but for the past couple of years, we've been incorporating a lot more practice and case studies and maybe um, some mock role modeling and conversations because it is sometimes scary talking to your patient for the first time. And so um, just helping our students feel really prepared and confident when they walk into their day one of rotations. All right, so my last question is a two-part question. So the first part is, what would be the three best adjectives or descriptors to describe your program? Hmm. The three best, I would say, it may not be exactly an adjective, but one thing I think Southern Miss goes above and beyond, and we expect our students to go above and beyond. Um, so there is a acceptable way of doing things. And then I feel that they're Southern Miss's way of doing things. Same thing goes with our interns and with our, their practice in the facility. Um, so that would be one thing. Um, I think Southern Miss is very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not, I, I would say our staff, our faculty were very supportive and approachable. Um, we also, like I mentioned, you're going to do a lot of role-playing counseling education. And so um, that's a big thing for us, I think, is that communication piece, being able to interact with other professionals and patients. And so I think we try to exemplify that in our, in our professors and our instructors as well. Um, and the third one, anything jumping out at you, Roxanne? Hmm. That's a hard one, Dr. McKinley. <laughs> I would say Roxanne would say ethical, huh? I would say that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah, like when you say it's the Southern Miss way, like this, this, you know, I always think when I walk on campus and just when Molly was showing all the pictures, um, there is a, there's a certain charm about the Southern Miss way. Everybody's welcome. It has that kind of, southern hospitality um everyone is well taken care of if you're looking for an internship where things are you know well laid out 
and you always have somebody that you can count on, then Southern Miss is your place because you have so many people to support you, the director, course mentors, faculty, staff members, um, and kind of we're all working to get you to the end goal, which is to become an RD. I mean, everything that we do is to get you to pass the RD exam. Um, so that is always in the back of our mind. Um, the simulations that Molly talked about, the different ways that we're preparing you, it all has that kind of ultimate goal of passing the RD exam. All right. So the second half of the question, very similar with adjectives or descriptors, three to describe your ideal applicants. Hmm. Um, well, one thing I always like to say is a flexible intern. Um, as we've all probably seen this year, things don't always go according to plan. And so being an intern, you're sometimes going back and forth between different rotations or managing coursework while you're at your facilities. Um, and so just being a bit flexible is key. Um, I would agree with Ms. Kingston's honest statement, being open and honest with your instructors, with your internship director, um, and with your preceptors is huge. And so, like we've said probably a few times now, we're really there to support you, but the best thing you as an intern can do is communicate to us when you need that support or um, when something maybe isn't going according to plan, it's always better to get out in front of it. So just being open and honest, um, that's two adjectives, but I'm gonna count it as one because I think my third one would probably just be hardworking. Like that's kind of what we expect from our interns. We want you to go above and beyond. Um, so instead of just submitting that acceptable paper, but really putting in that extra effort using your critical thinking skills. Um, show us what you know. And so those would be my three. All right, perfect. So I encourage the students that are with us live to, to put your questions in the chat if you have some. I don't see any right now, so I'm gonna ask one of my backup questions. So Roxanne, you said that the ultimate goal is to get them to pass the RD exam. What does your pass rate look like? So we have a 100% one year pass rate. Um, so we, you know, take the, they do the RD exam course. That's kind of the, the last thing that they do before their degree is conferred. Um, we, because the master's is required as part of our program, they have to be kind of processed through and get their degree conferred before they get their verification statement, which takes maybe about two weeks or so. And so after that, we're kind of like, listen, study, 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 but let's not wait too long. So I would say within about two to three months, I've had as quickly as two to three weeks, which makes me very nervous. So two to three months, interns are, are usually taking the test and, and a lot of them um, are passing on the first time. So we, um, yeah, we're proud of, of, our, of our pass rate and, you know, what we kind of are setting out to do it is happening. And so, and I really think it's the different things that are incorporated into the program. I mean, most, all internships, their goal should be for you to pass the RD exam to pass it as quickly as possible. So that is our goal as well. We spend a lot of time too during your courses, especially that last year, summer, fall, and spring, that you'll be taking practice RD exams. And, um, we walk you through the questions and say, why was this answer the way it was? And why is this question structure important um, in figuring out what the right answer is? Or like we say, what the most right answer is. Um, so you get a full year of experience and RD exam practice. All right. And Molly, you had mentioned earlier about changes with COVID. So what are some of the changes that you've had to make, or maybe you made in the spring that you've decided to continue with doing with having COVID still with us? Yeah, so spring was a little on the fly. Ms. Kingston and I worked really hard for about a week to get as many resources as we could together to make up some of those rotations like renal or long-term care that our students just couldn't participate in. Um, and so now we have all of these resources ready to go if we ever need them. 
Um, and throughout the next year, I'd mentioned some experiential learning during some of your coursework, but we're also incorporating that into your clinical rotations as well. So for instance, in the past, um, students have had to make up the days they might have missed for fencing. And we've been talking about over the next couple of years, instead incorporating some alternative supervised practice those days to add in those hours. And it's still what you would be doing in your case, in your clinical rotations per se, it might be writing chart notes and assessing patients and, um, you know, something that you can do from home in a virtual experience and then get that feedback so that we too can be a little bit more involved and, and supportive during rotations. All right. So is there, oh, sorry. No. I'll just ahead. add that as painful as the pandemic has been for a lot of people, I think for Molly and I as professionals and with this program, it has actually pushed us in a direction that we didn't really know we wanted to go. We didn't know we wanted to make up new curriculums and, and things like that. And maybe we didn't really want to at the time, but now we have it and we have so many alternate experiences now. And I think we both have discovered um, how competencies can be met in different capacities. So it's been a really great experience of growth um, for, for both of us and for our program. And through that spring experience, we kind of learned what worked and what didn't work. And, um, you know, we're moving forward with really um, putting things into our program permanently that did work. So, you know, if we can spin that positively, it, it has had a positive spin for us, I think. And we continue to deal with, with COVID things because it hasn't gone away. Um, and we just, I think we've learned to be just as flexible as the students. So um, just kind of roll with the punches like, like everybody is doing. But we have our interns in the spring finished up on time, every one of them. And, um, you know, they were all confident in all the areas. So we were able to successfully get them through. All right, perfect. So I'm just wondering if the following scenario can occur since um, you have your program and then there is a master's, just a plain master's program at Southern Miss in Nutrition, correct? Okay, so is it possible for say a student goes through the match process, doesn't match, your program fills for that year, there's no available spots, a student decides to enroll in Southern Miss's master's program, are they ever eligible to be part of your internship if they started a master's degree first? And then a year goes by and they want to be a part of your internship because they're already completing your online program. That's a tricky question. So technically, we, you know, you apply to graduate school and the DI at the same time. So if you don't get into the DI, then, um, you know, you're just, you're, you're still, you're not considered for that piece of the program. However, you, if you really wanted to come to Southern Miss and you were willing to kind of uh, just do graduate school and then try again for the DI, we might would have to put some, some um, supplemental classes in there because it, it might not match up just perfectly. But there are ways that we could, we could work through that. And another thing that I do want to tell your group now that you mentioned that is we typically go through second round match almost every year. So I want to encourage anybody watching this session, if you find yourself in a situation where you did not match with anybody, and Dr. McKinley, if you find any of your students in that situation, um, you know, we have gotten some really awesome interns in second round match, just because maybe they didn't apply to Southernness. Maybe they put all their eggs in one basket and didn't match with the place they applied. Um, so we'd love to see your apps in that, in that second round match, if you didn't match in computer match, but I would say the first thing to do, if you don't match and you kind of want to look at kind of next steps would be to reach out to Molly, who can then also direct that kind of other portion of the other master's program where non-RDs, um, go through it and we can we can devise kind of a plan to put you on the path to where you want to get to. All right, perfect. Because for those watching, um, 
in my fall class, we talk about these things. And right now we're talking about second round match and, and having a backup plan and how awesome second round match can really help a lot of students and students find programs that they didn't, they never realized they would enjoy. And no matter what, everyone finds their home at the end of the day and it all works out. So that's where I'm at in this semester of reassuring our students that second round match is still, it, does, it doesn't mean the programs are just taking students. It's, Sometimes they look at it as, oh, I'm not as good, so I'm a second round matcher. It's not really like that. It's 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 a it's a numbers game, and it takes two rounds to figure it all out. And uh, I'm happy that you mentioned that because I I do know I share the programs that uh that come up with uh, program uh, spots that are available. So I definitely encourage students to to not give up and and look at second round as a, as a better opportunity to maybe find a spot. And I must say that I am going to steal what you said about it's a uh, what is it, it's a sec two round process or it takes two rounds to figure it out. That's that's perfect. That's a perfect description of it. Mm -hmm. All right. So if any of the students that are with us live would like to ask a question, I'm going to open the floor to you. You can just go ahead and unmute if you'd like to ask anything anyone's feeling brave this evening. Maybe I just did an awesome job with asking all the good questions. Maybe. Okay, doesn't look like they have any questions on our live session. So as we come to a close, Molly and or Roxanne, what are your kind of final messages to potential applicants this year? Um, I would say that I know this is a stressful process. So like Dr. McKinley said, like you're going to find your home. And so, you know, just take a breath, match how you feel best directed to, and then wherever you end up is where you're supposed to end up. It's kind of the cheesy way of putting it, but, um, you know, here I am five years later and I couldn't have imagined going anywhere else than Southern Miss. And so, um, I hope you all feel that way as well. Yeah, and I would just say, just give it a try. Um, I, it, I, I hate it when I hear students say, well, I would never get in. or I'm not going to do this because X, Y, and Z. It's like, you never know unless you try. So get, all, get everything together. Get all your personal, your personal statement, your resume, everything that you need, and then just give it a go. Um, because you never know unless you try. So you could be a perfect match for Southern Miss. All right, those are great parting words for this evening. I thank you, Roxanne and Molly, for joining me this evening. And for those at home, if you want more information about the program at Southern Miss and to get a hold of Roxanne or Molly with your questions, I've posted the link to their webpage in the description below this video. And as always, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my page so you never miss a spotlight session with another dietetic internship. And we'll see you next time.